Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invite you to Let George Do It. The Treasure of Millie's Wharf, another adventure of George Valentine. Sir, Mr. Valentine, dear Mr. Oh, Valentine, Valentine! Oh, but what will I say? Valentine. What will I write? How can I ever tell how exciting it is? Uh, this is the town of Millie's Wharf. Yes, Millie's Wharf. And dear sir, my name is Millie. And as my fourth husband used to say, Valentine, Valentine. shut up, you skinny, cockeyed, brainless bird! Oh, now, did I hurt him, little feelings? Poor, dumb little parrot. Can't talk back. There, there, Cupid. Cupid! Shut up, you skinny cock-eyed rainless bird! Dear Mr. Valentine! <laughs> Nothing ever happens in Millie's War. At least not since my last husband died, and that was years ago. Nobody of any importance lives here anymore, but here we are, situated on the historical old bay of Ireland. Yesterday, when I was gone picking blueberries, my parrot, whose name is Cupid, and who steals things, and whose wings ain't clipped so he can fly, stole something. I don't know where he got it or how, but it's a map. Here in this place where the Spanish ships used to come. And on the map is a mark. But why would anyone put a mark at a place underwater? Yes, out behind one of the islands where it's easy to fathom. On this map, there are arrows and directions and a great big red X. Shut up! A map, Mr. Valentine, and something underwater and an X to mark the spot. Well, but it's only a torn piece of notebook paper, the kind you buy in a five and ten. I know, I know. And the rat is just pencil, just ordinary pencil. I know, I know, I know. I certainly don't see anything to get excited about in just a... Mr. Valentine, why should anyone draw such a map? Well, to locate a shoal, maybe. You said it was shallow out there. Twenty or thirty feet, but no, no, no. Maybe no. somebody wanted to remember a place to anchor. Hasn't been a ship in the bay bigger than a snipe since my second husband went to the bottom in a lumber scow. <laughs> Exciting, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. Now look, Millie, so your bird wanders around the wharf picking things up, so he gets a piece of paper with scratches and arrows. That's... Asthma readings, compass bearings... So whoever drew it could find the place marked X again. Oh, that's the way it looks, but... Now, Mr. Valentine, tell me, why would anyone draw such a map, huh? Oh, maybe somebody was out fishing and lost his wristwatch and wanted to mark the place, that's all. Just because there's a lot of legends about this bay. There are ships sunk here, lots of ships. Miss Brooks. Now, when Henry Morgan sacked the city of Panama in the year 1600-something, there were Spanish ships that fled to the north. And lots of them big galleons was just simply loaded down to the hey, gunnel. Hey, with... Millie, look. I've heard how the suckers used to come flocking to this place looking for buried treasure. And so did you, didn't you? The minute I wrote the letter, just cause I need the help of a red-blooded man who... I come... came here to tell you not to spend time and money trying to get in on whatever somebody else has already found. There, now. You said it yourself. Somebody's found something. That's what the X is. Somebody's found something and marked the place so they could come back. But we're going to beat them to it, you and me, Mr. Valentine. What? It's fine as keepers, ain't it? So here's what you do. Now, there's a long drink of water, owns a little store and hotel down the road. Now, his name's Uriah Jenks, and he's about as wide awake as a barnacle. But he owns a little rowboat, you see? Only one around here, and he never uses it. But you're going to borrow that boat, and oh, we're hey, just... Oh, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Slow down, Millie. Huh? You mean you expect me to row all the way out just to take a look at that place marked X on the silly piece of paper? Oh, you row fast, because now I'll show this bird, the parrot. Come on in here. You what? Been bandaged and put in a cage ever since I come home and found him last night. 
Oh, yes, I had to. My poor little Cupid who stole the map. <coughs> Only look at him, Mr. Oh. Valentine, at his wing. Now, you're not going to tell me that X isn't exciting and important when the same day he was innocently stealing the map, my poor little bird got a hole in his feathers. Yes, somebody shot a Cupid with a gun. <coughs> How about leaks, Mr. Valentine? But it's been used lately, Mr. Jenks. I know Leaks it's... like a sieve. Man practically drowned. What man? When was this? Man you... who used it, naturally. Wouldn't be anybody else. All right, but will you tell now, me? Now, my advice to you is to stay away from that Millie woman, her and that nuisance bird. Good advice for any man. But, Mr. Jenks, we want to know who it was. Man, but... that's all. Man who... Oh, go on. Let's hear some more. Just rented it for the day. Come in the night before... But where did he take the boat? I mean, George, he might have been the one who went out and he drew that map. He bought some red pencils. I know that much. Uh-huh. That's him, all right. Now, look, what's his name? Come in night before. Yes, sir. Windy night it was. I remember that. Just a man. Short he was. Stucky. Just sort of there he was at the door. Middle of the night. But, but didn't you ask him anything about Spent himself? the or... next day out in the boat. That's all I know. Oh, brother. First it's a parent with a map, and now it's a mysterious stranger in the middle of the night. Leave well enough alone, I say. What's mysterious? The man's name is Laver, Dr. Laver. You know how I found that out? He signed my register. See? Emil Laver. And you know where he is now? On his way to catch a bus out of town. Why should you interfere? Nothing to get excited about. Forget him. Forget the whole thing. Well, this must be where the bus driver men, Angel. Yes. There's the water tower over there. Where he dropped labor off, 12 miles from town. Only there's nothing out here, George, just sand dunes. This part of the shore is closer to the little islands, though. Sure. Look, here's the tracks where the bus stops. And the tracks of a man, George. Huh? Dr. Laver. Come on, they cut across the sand. Well, at least he doesn't have a wooden leg, does he? <laughs> but I bet he has a patch over his eye or Look, a bandana. Look, there's a perfectly logical explanation for all this Robert Louis Stevenson stuff. That's why I want to find Laver before I go galloping out after an ex. What is it? This logical... I don't know. I'll ask him. Up. I'll... George, there's the water. Yeah. And his footsteps. So you're going to ask him, huh? They just... Just walk right out into the ocean. Oh, now, wait a minute. They can't just... Hey, Brooksy, look. Hmm? Up the beach there, see? Man. Yeah, and they're working at something. Hey, stay here, will you? But, George... Hey, where are you going? Well, hello there, friend. Sure, sure, I'm everybody's friend. Where are you going? Oh, just out for a walk, Skipper. What's it to you? <laughs> when a man is bigger than you oh, are... Oh, off that. I was looking for a guy named Dr. Laver. Hmm? Look someplace else. Why? You're off a ship, aren't you? Labor's tracks go down to the water there. Well, who picked him up in a small rowboat? You? Oh, now look, friend, don't be so smart. Just go now away. Now you got a crew of men working up the beach. Yes, 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 of course I picked him up several hours ago. So what? Now he's out on my ship and those men are loading water for my ship. Isn't that exciting? Well, it might be. And it might not. Goodbye. Might even be worth shooting a hole in a parrot. What? Tell me, is your friend Labor the kind of guy who draws maps? Does he go around putting X's on... I told you when a man is bigger oh, than... Oh, get off it, Buster. My friend, it's too bad you're so curious. George, look out! Now, wait a minute. You... But they just went off and left you, George. And you wouldn't wake up. They loaded water tanks into a boat and headed out for their ship, wherever that might be. Around this next island, lady. Yeah, yeah, sure, Mac. Hey, can't you crank a little more speed out of this outboard? Well, we're doing all right. Turn in just second. Daylight now. George, it's crazy to go banging right back out here. I'm all we... right, Brooks. I tell you, I'm fine. I just slept through a couple of reels, and I want to catch up with that captain. But Why? He's still bigger than you, and nothing has actually happened that you know he's mixed up in. Well, anything. maybe I just want to see that X underwater. Well, you sing the ship, so as we get out of the line of those trees. 
How do you know how exactly where this boat's anchored? Because I come out during the night, that's why. The night? What? Yeah, I'll hire up for anybody, mister. Millie and that sleepy fella James over Millie's law. So what did you think I was doing over there with my outboard anyway? They gave me a call. I brought them both out here and then left him. Brother, I did miss a lot, didn't I? Half the feature. There it is, George. Yeah, that's her. Nice tub, ain't it? Yeah. And with practically everybody on board now, huh? Say, what's all that funny rig, you know? Oh, not sure. Diving, I think. Diving? Oh, I don't mean real deep sea stuff. But there's lines running down there, see? And uh, well, that's the pump on deck. George, so it is a yeah, hey, look, somebody's been below just now, just coming up. Look, a skinny guy in a helmet, see? Yeah. I wonder what he found down there. I wonder what the X really is. <laughs> Hey, hey, wait a minute, friend. Oh, oh, of course. Oh, of course, so glad to have you aboard, Mr. Valentine. Oh, excuse my trunks, Miss Brooks. Did you see what I'm diving? Let's see what you found, Professor Schmidt. That's what interests me. Yes, our last trip we should get it. Down amongst those rocks, I knew we would. They're dangerous. They're so big. Look, you see? George, look what he was diving for. A, a lobster. Oh, no, 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 Miss Brooks. No, not just a lobster, a type of crayfish. Yes, certainly, but... Up and down this coast we have chased, looking but never finding this exact specimen. You mean that's crayfish. what you're here for, crayfish? Hey, what did you get? Look, look at him, Emil. Isn't he a beauty? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, permit me. Uh, Dr. Emil Laver, Miss Brooks, Mr. Valentine. Hello. Oh, yeah, Emil is the other half of our little expedition. Expedition? Yes, he's the marine botanist. Uh, crustaceans are my specialty. Harry, I think Mr. Valentine had a little different idea about our mysterious presence. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, I've talked to that old harpy, that Millie. That... Oh, oh, yes, yes, that nonsense. Yes, I know. Oh, but now see here, Emil, I found another one of those. What? Mm-hmm. I haven't scraped the stuff off. Now, wait a minute. There. M L. Well, anyway, it's the year sixteen hundred something. It's a coin. Yes. It's rather interesting, isn't it? Minted by the Spanish, I should say. I think it's called a doubloon. Oh, now wait. Let's get this straight. You guys are a scientific outfit, but you turn up Spanish coins. You make a map with an X on it. Now, tell Valentine, please, please, there's an explanation. And the captain of your boat takes a poke at me. Let's get him in on this explaining, too. Of course. Be patient. I suppose he's one of the eager beavers who jumped to the rail the minute that word doubloon came on. He's somewhere, perhaps in his cabin. George! George, there's the captain. There's enough light so that you can see now. X marks the spot, all right. What? In the helmet. See, the helmet underwater. He's down there, George, down on the bottom, only... Only the way his arms are moving, he looks more like he's dead. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. One of these evenings, you may have some friends over for Canasta. Comes midnight, and you want to drive them home. But what's this? First, your car is hard to start. Then it kind of hiccups down the avenue. It has no pep in traffic, and it, it pings on hills. Better your friends had walked than be embarrassed like this. But seriously, if your car does act like this most of the time, it may be the fault of gummy gasoline. Most raw gasoline contains impurities that form gum. Then the gum gets into the fuel line, carburetor, spark plugs. To avoid this trouble, depend on Chevron Supreme. It's the gasoline that's super refined to get rid of those impurities which could form gum. That's why Chevron Supreme gives faster starting, smoother pickup, ping-free power on hills. And that's why folks say Chevron Supreme gives them that new car feeling. Try super refined Chevron Supreme in your car tomorrow. Get it at standard stations... And the independent Chevron gas stations, where they say and mean, we take better care of your car. Mm -hmm. 
And now back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You go to the town of Millie's Wharf. You meet a parrot that someone shot at. You meet a woman who is all excited over the idea of Spanish treasure and sunken galleons. You meet two scientists who seem to be a good deal more interested in the discovery of a new type of lobster. But if your name is George Valentine, the one person you met whom you'd like to meet again is the captain of the scientist's ship, the man who knocked you out and left you on the beach hours ago. Only now, in the water below you, the captain has just been found. He's wearing a diving helmet, but from his appearance, he's dead. Grab these lines. Pull him up. Hurry now. Get that winch going. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, get that bird out of here. Don't you touch Cooper. He's not doing anything, Mr. Smith. Nothing much we can do, Mr. Valentine. Oh, yes, there is, Lady. Come here, lady. I'm just watching, that's all. Keep the air in his air hose. Now... Let go of Why me. Why did you come out here, you and that bird of yours? But you just up and disappeared. And then Mr. Jenks said he'd seen this ship from driving up on the hill. So the two of you hired a boat and came out, huh? Well, I've just been sitting here waiting for daylight. Sure. So you could see what they were diving for. No, no, no. Keep the air going. You may just be in trouble. No, I already knew about the money. The Spanish treasure. Here, you see? After you'd gone, I got looking around, and Cupid had brought it back. And it was hidden in the... Please, yeah. You don't have to tell me. It's one of them pieces of eight. Cupid's stealing things again, huh? And that's why I'm here, and I'm going to stay. Until every last penny of it's brought aboard. I'll have you know my third husband owned a lot of property around this bay. And if I haven't got some legal rights to ownership, okay, then I'm going okay. to... Okay, join the gold rush, then. Hold hands with your friend, Jinx. With what? That spineless, sweepy head. I'll skip it, will you? Any luck, Schmidt? Well, the winch boat pull his line up, Mr. Valentine. The current seems to have snagged one of those lines. Yeah, you could swing the boat around, Professor. Might be able to get a better pull from the other side. Let's tie it, Harry. I'll try anything. Only step on it, will you? Get that guy up. So strange. He never liked to dive. He laughed at us for doing it. He was lazy. Just a hired captain. When we could pay him. He wasn't so lazy when he hit me. He'd already heard about that first doubloon, hadn't he? I guess so. Professor Schmidt found it last evening. We joked about it. it meant nothing to us. Curious. But it would drive a guy like the captain crazy. Look, didn't anybody know he was down there? That's too early before dawn. He was eager, I guess. The pumps are automatic. You just take a helmet and go over the side. Why did you draw that map, Dr. Levin? What? You did draw that map, didn't you? Oh, that. <laughs> of course. I, I draw them all, 50 or 60 this summer. Here, I could show you. Never mind. Never mind. Just show it. Oh, well, sometimes I go ahead of the others. A sort of reconnaissance from our last place up the coast. I came down to this Millie's Wharf. I hired a boat. I found this place. It looked good. That map had nothing to do with it. Well... Were these coins that drifted into the same place, huh? Well, there's no ship sunk there. I know that. But, yes, things drift on the floor of the sea, perhaps. It's all the way around now, sir. Those lines are foul. That's why we can't pull them up. Hold it, Dr. Lever. Down on those rocks. You see them? I've had that same trouble Now, myself. what's the matter, Professor? Oh, I'm going down now myself. These ropes are all tangled. Uh, no, you were just down, Harry. Uh, I'll take the helmet. Well, there are two of them. That's right. You sit still, Professor Schmidt. Hmm? Come on, Lever. I'll help you get the captain. Well, it's easy enough, but if you're not experienced... Come on, you'll... let's do a little diving. Yeah, yeah, sure. Feels a little silly being lowered like this. These weights on the sandals. Well, the professor didn't want you to just climb down, but it's only 35 feet or so, he says. I know. For me, it looks like 70. Boy, it's sure getting darker. Can you see him yet, George? Yeah. I'm dragging these lines. It's a little hard. Well, don't get them tangled on the rocks like he did. Now, just take it easy, please. This is so shallow, you can kick the gear off and swim up. The captain couldn't do it, could he? What? I didn't say anything. Oh, wait a minute. A George on the other phone. Dr. Labor says there's nothing wrong with the captain's line. Looks more like he fell, and then they got tangled. Yeah, I know. Labor's right beside me. He's pointing. Yeah, I can see. I think he's right, Angel. George, you get there already? George? Captain's dead all right, Brooksy. I don't know what could have gone wrong. The air is still pumping into his helmet, but it's all crooked. Water got in, too. You mean he drowned? Yeah, I guess so. Nothing else wrong with him, though. Looks more like he fell, and that knocked his helmet cockeyed. 
I mean, I don't know how a man could fall underwater. It's all slow motion. Unless he was... Unless... Hey, Brooksy. Brooksy. Hey. What? What in the name? Take right away from there, Mr. James. I didn't do anything. Well, it's all right, George. Oh. It was the air intake, but it's all right. Yeah. Oh, brother. Cigarette near the air intake, huh? Yeah, I heard Schmidt. I was going to say a second ago, I guess that's how it was done. What? How the captain was murdered, Angel. Yeah, you heard me murdered. Only we'd never be able to prove it. Hey, listen. There's a pouch thing on the captain's belt. Yeah, yeah, later I see him. One, two, three. The captain was down here collecting them all right. Eleven. Eleven more Spanish doubloons. Brooksy. Brooksy. Nothing to get excited about, Mr. Valentine. Huh? Jenks. Hey, where'd she go? Put her on. Man should stay in his element, though. Good advice. Hey, look, what's this? That's where you're staying. Below, I mean. Hope it don't get too cold for a while, Mr. Valentine. Put that gun down. Put it down, I said. For heaven's sake, Mr. Jenks. Never mind, Professor. It won't go off. You are, Jenks. I'm warning you. Won't go off unless you open your mouth, Millie. Close it. You worm turning chiseler. You've got no more right to the planet. Millie, I warned you. Any more of your chatter, and you'll have powder burns like that pesky bird of yours did. And if you don't shut him up, I'll get my aim better and hit him. No, you're the one. You shot at him. You are a jump it, it, both of you. That's what I say, miss. Words are a waste of thought. Can you hear me down there? Hello? Of course, yeah. Uh, Harry, what's Price going on to up you there? to you, too. Just listen. we got a treasure now. A few piddling coins. We've stumbled into something that may turn out to be bigger than Fort Knox. And all I want is an agreement. Fair and square. Now's the time to make it. Now, isn't that reasonable, Mr. Valentine? Well... George! Valentine! Here, give me that phone. Valentine! There he is on the surface. Hey, throw me a line, will you? Hurry up. No, no, here, I've got you. What, what happened? Oh, you got out of your helmet. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, it's like being thrown out of a jack in a box, Angel. No, I'm okay. Well, hello, everybody. Oh, George, this crazy Mr. Jenks, he shot you with Mr. Valentine. He admitted it. All right, all right. He's got a gun. Leave him alone. George. Sure. Just hold it steady, friend. That's all. You know, I kind of like you, Jenks. You give me ideas. Well, if that ain't... So the... you shot at the bird, huh? Nothing to be ashamed of in that. Hey, stole that coin and the map from the rowboat the other day. Seen him do it. You got the fever bad, haven't you? Mr. Valentine, labor is still down there. Yeah, he's all right. On the phone, isn't he? Mm. Professor... How'd you guys get along with the captain? Somebody said you didn't pay him very often or something. Oh, no, no, he... Uh... Oh, well, we did owe him money. He was trying to get possession of the boat, but really... I met the guy, not very pleasant, I can imagine. Here, let me have that phone. Well, it doesn't have anything to do That's with... That's not what... your idea, is it, Labor? Labor, can you hear me? Of course. I will come back up the deck and... A helmet, a couple of lines, and a phone. It'd be almost impossible for an able-bodied man to get in trouble down there. And he could always get out the way I did... Unless his lines were really tangled, which the captains weren't. I don't have that cigarette. George, you said the air If you're air smoking, it's easy to make a man cough down there. Like this. <laughs> hey, what, what is it? Oh, I'm sorry, Doctor. <laughs> I'm coming on deck. Oh, now there, there, that's better. But a cigarette isn't enough to kill a man, even if he choked and had trouble with his helmet. You have to stand up in one of those helmets, though, don't you? To really keep the water out. I'm coming up. You're not coming up. Not even the way I did. What? I was dragging the lines for both of us, remember? For the time being, you're with the fish, Buster. I tied your lines. You're crazy. I want to try a lot of things in front of this air intake. Maybe I can tell by the way you act what you used on the captain. Was it formaldehyde? Gasoline? Ether? Valentine, what did you think you're That's trying... how you killed him, wasn't it? How you made him pass out down there so he'd fall and drown? <laughs> Fairly shiny coins, too, aren't they? Where'd you get them, a museum? What are you talking well, about? Well, a man couldn't dive down that deep from a rowboat and get a coin, could he? So where did the parrot steal that coin of his along with a map? Oh, and he's been bandaged ever since that day, so he couldn't have wandered around to steal it since then. Valentine, please let me... So if you had a coin that day, you didn't get it from the bottom of the ocean. You brought it here. You brought all of them here. Sure, and the map makes more sense that way anyway. You draw a map when you bury treasure, not when you dig it up. I always drew them. I told you I located the... Skip it. 
You saw to the ocean like you saw the fraudulent mine. And why? To get that loud talking captain who'd never do any diving himself down there. To sucker him into a spot where you could commit a perfect murder. I didn't. <coughs> Take that away from the end. Take. Buster, you started a fake treasure hunt. But too many people got excited over Spanish doubloons. That's what trapped you. Take it away. I can't breathe right when you. <laughs> Keep talking, friend. We'll be down to get you in a minute. But we'll haul up a confession first. No, Angel. There was no gold in that bay. Laver admitted it when he wrote his confession. Stole 13 doubloons from the collection up north. Did he ever explain why he killed the captain, George? Well, he hated the guy. The captain did have a lean on the boat. Was going to take it away from the hard-working scientists. And I guess that's all Laver lived for, pottering around on the bottom of the ocean. But Professor Smith didn't have anything to do with it. No. George, wait a minute. Hmm? You said the confession said 13 coins. Yeah. But as I remember, when we added them up, there were 14. So? Now, listen. I mean, there really were Spanish ships in this bay, and... Well, where did the extra coin come from? Aren't you curious at all? Uh, uh, definitely. I'm... Oh, for... Oh, hey, say something cute, but not just X, X, X. What a... Shut up, you skinny cocker! I you go on a vacation, you usually plan on spending a certain amount of money. But here's a way to enjoy your motoring trip and save money at the same time. Before you start out, have your car's crankcase drained and refilled with RPM motor oil. First choice where driving's toughest. And have your car's oil filter inspected. By keeping grit and dirt out of your precision-built engine, the oil filter is a real money saver. But if you use clean, fresh oil with a clogged-up filter, it's just like throwing money away. Start your vacation trip with a new Atlas Micronic filter element, and you'll be money ahead with a cleaner engine. This low-cost Atlas Micronic filter element traps all the sludge, all the abrasives, right down to particles as tiny as 39 millionths of an inch. How about doing this tomorrow? Get an Atlas Micronic filter element at your standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Martha Wentworth was heard as Millie, Herb Butterfield as Jenks, Harold Deerenforth as Labor, Joe Duvall as the captain, Larry Dobkin as Schmidt, Dick Ryan as the man, and Bill James as Cupid. The music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. Thank you.